We're going to do a quick unboxing overview and then we'll take this guy down to the range, check her out. And while we're at the range, we're going to test out the BDC marks and also get some images of the reticle for you guys. So this is their 1 to 10 power LPVO. They call it the bear power. Uh, there's some quick stats for you there. There's a close-up of the reticle, which again has the BDC marks for 5.56. Screen wipe. Comes with the cantilever mount. Hardware. Nice foam padding inside the box. Got our battery there for the illuminated reticle. There's another battery for backup. That's nice. They send you two. Another little Allen wrench there. Probably for the resettable turret. So it could pack. <clears throat> and there she is. Of course, you have your uh, caps there. Interestingly, they are not transparent. Usually, their LPVO scopes come with transparent caps, but this one does not. Yeah, that's what that little Allen wrench would be for there for the re-zeroable turrets. Nice, soft, easy to move. Has a little bit of play. Very audible clicks. Check the other one here. Same story on the side, there's a little play to them, but I do like the nice audible clicks and it's very smooth. So under here is where you put your battery for the illuminated reticle. That's very smooth as well. Nice audible clicks for that. And then there's your magnification all the way up to 10x. Let's try that out. Okay. That guy's a little stiff, but not too bad, and they always uh, wear in after you twist them a couple times, and they'll smooth up for you. Should have a diopter here under this cap, I believe. Yep. So, get this guy going here. There we go. <clears throat> so, there's your rear diopter. Fast focus eye. Um, you know, your standard shockproof, fogproof, waterproof. But what I'm most excited about is the fact that there's a... 10x magnification on an LPVO. You know, back in the day, pretty much all you had was a 1 to 4 power for LPVO. And then when all the companies came out with the 1 to 6s, everyone was blown away by that. Because 6x magnification for those several hundred yard shots was way better than 4x. Uh, then a few came out with the 8s. And so now we're all the way up to 10x magnification on these LPVOs. So, I mean... I've shot 500 yards on only four power before, but it really kind of sucks. So uh, 10x magnification is going to be great for those kinds of ranges. All right. After a very rudimentary zero down here at 100 yards, literally just picking random items to shoot at until I hit them. Um, I decided to go for these pieces of wood here, and then we move out to uh, 200 and 400 yards to test the BDC marks. Now here I'm showing you the target I'm shooting at at 200 yards, which is a 16 inch steel gong. Should be able to hear all those impacts. Now the range was kind of busy this day and I had other obligations I had to get done this day as well so I didn't have the time to wait in between the busy range to keep running back and forth to set up new targets at different distances but I wanted to try out the BDC mark um, for 400 yards to see how well it lined up. 
So what I did was I just aimed at the top of this uh, wooden post that's laying down there on the 400 yard mound and just shot at towards the top of that. And it's hard to tell in the video here, but it was actually pretty windy this day. I had about 10 mile an hour crosswinds. Uh, so that's why you'll see every shot does hit slightly off to the left, about a foot or so. Um, but it placed all these shots down here at 400 yards, pretty close to right on that 400 yard mark. So I would wager to say that they're pretty accurate marks for the distances that they correspond to. And again, as I said, busy range. Every shot you've heard so far was not mine. Um, so every one you see kick up the dirt just to the left of that post, again, because the wind is pushing it to the left, those are my shots. So as you can see, 400 yard mark on the 400 yard mound. It's putting them all right about where it should be, albeit off to the left due to the wind. I noticed on this scope in particular on 1x, it actually seemed to be slightly less than 1x, making the object appear a little further away. Um, but to me, that's actually a good thing because that's the whole point of an LPVO scope is so that you can actually use it at extremely close range because your normal scope, you know, even like a three to nine power, three power is too much magnification if the perp is right in front of you. You know, you bring it up and the field of view is going to be so small because they're so close and it's going to be blurry and all that. So that's the whole point of an LPVO is to be able to put it on that one X. So if they're only, you know, 10, 15 feet in front of you, you can just bring it up, you know, quick scope as they call it in the video game world and uh, you don't have any problem finding the target because it's just like using iron sights because you're not zoomed in at all. Um, so with it actually being a little bit in the negative there, being a little bit smaller than what it actually appears to the human eye, I actually view that as an advantage, um, especially if they're extremely close because, you know, you got to look through that tube. So I certainly don't view it as a disadvantage at all, if anything, maybe even a slight advantage. Um, as long as you still get the advertised maximum um, magnification, which in this case being 10x, and I'm going to say you do because like a, I've been to this range a ton of times and I shoot out there four and, and 500 yards all the time, including with some, like I said, four powers and three to nines and three to twelves and four to sixteens. And I got to say, I can tell out there at 500 yards that um, with it on 10x magnification, it is definitely 10x magnification because it's definitely getting me closer to the dark, the target uh, than some of my, my 3 to 9s do. So while 1x actually seems like a little less than 1x, 10x is definitely 10x all the way out there for sure. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like, I'm going to show you uh, some various distances here on 1x and 10x. Uh, but before I do so, I just want to make a comment. This scope was insanely clear. Not only the, the reticle and the crosshairs and all that, but just uh, the imagery and everything. And that includes up on full power 10x magnification. I was really impressed by that. I really thought that I was going to lose some clarity and maybe even get a little fisheye or something up on 10x. Um, but if you get the diopter right, which for me it was set perfect from the factory, and you hold your head where it should be to get you know the best image it does get a little more difficult to hold your head in the right spot once you're on maximum magnification I wouldn't say it's extremely difficult but I mean anyone who shoots scopes a lot knows that you know once you're up on maximum magnification that you gotta be a little more diligent with where you hold your head in relation to the eye relief from the the scope lens there uh, But as long as you got your head where it should be when you're on maximum magnification there I can see perfectly through it crystal, crystal clear I didn't notice any fish eye or distortion or anything like that. Like I said, the, the imagery was crystal clear and so was the reticle. And that's actually better. You know, usually the, the higher the magnification, the harder it is for these companies to keep everything crystal clear. And that's probably honestly why it blew me away so much because the previous 1 to 8 power that they sent me, once I had it up on maximum power, the full 8x there, 
it was like a little kind of hazy around the edges uh, but this 10x having even more power even more magnification it is crystal clear all the way up on 10x didn't matter whether it was 100 yards 200 yards or 500 yards um, so exceptional glass and clarity at this price point for sure but anyways here is that 100 yard mound on the minimum magnification all the way down on 1x and uh, please keep in mind that trying to get these images through the scope with my camera um, it's not going to be absolutely perfect so it does look um, like I said super crystal clear in all aspects uh, in person to the naked eye so looks much better in person than what you're seeing through the camera here and your field of view here on 1x at 100 yards is about 114 feet and there's with the illuminated reticle and now maximum power 10x on the same 100 yard mound as you can see that just gets you vastly closer to the target there that's a huge difference between uh, 1x and 10x there and your field of view at 100 yards there on 10x magnification is about 11.5 feet and then there's with the illuminated reticle as you can see daytime bright and as you can tell, I have the camera back away from the scope and all that, trying to get these images and such. Um, you have no problem seeing that um, tiny center red dot there with it illuminated in the daytime. I just can't pick it up the greatest with the camera. Also doesn't help that it's next, next to that uh, orange clay pigeon there. And while I'm on the subject of the center dot, um, that's about a one MOA dot because there was a clay out there at 500 yards, one of those clay pigeons you see there and um, it's about the exact same size at 500 yards with this on 10x magnification as one of those clay pigeons is out there and those are about four to five inches across so it's about a one MOA dot nice fine dot here's 200 yards on 1x the same 200 yards on 10x and that is a 16 inch plate for reference and then with the illuminated reticle and here's 500 yards on 1x and by the way guys you don't get that golden collar on those crosshairs there it's just because of where I'm having to hold the camera and there's 500 yards on 10x and as you can see it brings you really close down there you can actually see what you're looking at now and then again with the illuminated reticle and as you can see that is full sun down there and you can still see it so if you need that illumination during broad daylight like that for like a black bear or something you're gonna have no problem seeing that so overall guys final thoughts on this uh, it's a really great LPAVO for the price especially to get a 1 to 10 that's crystal clear on any magnification at any distance uh, the illuminated reticle is daytime bright um, For what it's worth I have a ton of their scopes and I have not had a single one fail on me yet The only possible way I could see to improve this model at all would be just to make the uh, turret clicks a little more crisp Other than that she's perfect in my mind So if you guys want to check it out again link in the description Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one